Did you know that the EU's attempt to make AI ethical could be the very thing crushing technological growth in Europe? In this video, I'll uncover the truth about the EU AI Act and why responsible AI is what we should really be focusing on. I'm Evan Goldstein, I'm a licensed professional engineer and a data scientist, and I'm building the AI capitalist channel to help leaders like yourself master the new world of abundant machine intelligence. On March 13th, 2024, the EU rolled out the EU AI Act, which adds new layers of rules to how AI can be developed across Europe. While it claims to bring a sense of unity to AI practices in the EU, many see it as it's more about putting the brakes on innovation rather than letting it grow and blossom. Instead of fostering a spirit of creativity, it takes a more cautious route, which might just hold Europe back in the exciting global AI arms race. The EU Act exemplifies how the EU thinks about ethical AI. Now, honestly, I've never been a fan of the whole idea of ethical AI. It seems pretty misguided at best, and at worst, it feels like a new way to cash in on a trendy concept. I'm all for responsible AI, which is really just about making sure products actually work as they're supposed to without causing any unwanted issues. This covers things like red teaming and penetration testing to really put AI products to the test. So as an aside, red teaming is a practice borrowed from the military and cybersecurity where a group of experts, the red team, pretend to be the bad guys, and they attempt to challenge and find weaknesses in a system and a strategy, or in this case, in an AI model. Penetration testing is a more specific form of security testing, and it's typically focused on finding and exploiting vulnerabilities in a system. Okay, so let me break down what the EU AI Act is all about, and then we can talk about why I think it's not so great and why I've got some big concerns about this whole idea of ethical AI. So first off, the EU describes AI as a machine system that works on different levels of independence and can adapt after it's been launched. Basically, it takes input and figures out how to come up with outputs like predictions, content, recommendations, or decisions that can impact real world or online spaces. Based on this definition of AI, the EU AI Act can be summarized into a few key points. It's a way to sort out different AI situations based on how they affect people. They've broken these situations down into three categories. You've got banned, high risk, and low risk. General purpose AI models such as OpenAI's ChatGPT and Google's Gemini would come under separate classification, which assesses the situation from a systemic risk perspective. So there are some AI solutions out there that are just a no-go because they could seriously mess with people's safety and rights. We're talking about stuff like social scoring systems, reading emotions at work, trying to dig up personal info like someone's race, religion, or political views. And let's not forget predictive policing, like we saw in Minority Report, where they try to guess who might commit a crime in the future, like future crime. High-risk AI systems are basically the ones used in scenarios where people's safety is on the line, like self-driving cars, medical gadgets, or important assets like power grids. Plus, they also cover AI used in hiring biometric tracking, figuring out who gets loans, like at bank loans, think like credit scores, and even in healthcare to decide who gets insurance. Low-risk AI stuff includes chatbots, AI-made videos, audio and automation for personal and administrative tasks. The EU AI Act looks like it's driven by a bit of fear that AI might become turned into a weapon or just go totally off the rails. So is the AI Act really just trying to pump the brakes on things? Are they worried about jobs getting lost up, people losing their gigs? And honestly, is this all about ethics or is it more about protecting their own interests? AI isn't doing anything that humans aren't already doing. Humans are already doing social scoring based on observations. When you meet someone at a restaurant, you're looking at how are they dressed? What is their body language? What's their appearance? What is their accent, vocabulary? You're already making these social observations. We're also already doing predictive policing by inserting ourselves into communities to do undercover police work, for instance. If the gang member is about to go shoot someone and the informant knows about it and informs the police, they're not gonna wait for that person to commit the crime. They're gonna put a stop to it before it happens. They're also already doing all kinds of background checks and people are arguably intrusively profiling during recruitment interviews. So I knew an interviewer who would follow the person back to the car and see if they had kid seats in the car. When you're starting your career at an entry level position, most people don't wanna see kids. All the AI solution is doing is making the implementation more consistent, more reliable, less error prone and way faster. There are already copious regulations on vehicular safety, on healthcare safety, on infrastructure safety. Why is there a need to call out AI specifically? Why can't we just apply all of these rules that we've already come up with to how we implement AI in the world? AI isn't making decision on its own. It's just there to help us carry out choices that humans have already made. We're the ones setting the goals and deciding how things should work. 
Now, honestly, it's pretty silly to think that AI is going to spiral out of control and become some, some kind of threat. There's just no proof behind that fear. We're still miles away from AGI, artificial general intelligence. And even if we do get there one day, what's the big deal? People mix up AGI with being conscious or having feelings. But those two things don't actually go together. And let's say intelligence does eventually lead to consciousness. Whose version of consciousness would it even be? Would it be like ours or something totally weird and different? Ever thought about how a bat perceives consciousness? Why do we expect so much more from AI than from humans when we already know that AI can do calculations more accurately? It's like we think AI is somehow less capable, so we put it under a magnifying glass. The rules set by the EU AI Act just scream double standards when we don't expect humans to meet those same high moral values. And if you feel that you're gaining value from this episode of AI Capitalist, I would urge you to hit the like button. Hitting lets me know that I'm making the content that you want to see. It helps spread that content to others, and it's going to break us out of small channel hell. So I really appreciate your support. Like when it comes to AI research development and how it's rolled out, you're going to hear people toss around the terms ethical AI and responsible AI like they're the same thing. But honestly, they're not. Pay close attention to the details and meaning behind these words. It actually matters. So what's the real difference between ethics, morality, and responsibility? Ethics is basically about following a set of rules that tell us what's right and what's wrong, and it often gets tangled up with the law. On the flip side, morality is shaped by our cultures and religions. So what feels right or wrong can really vary from person to person. Take euthanasia, for example. Some people think it's totally not okay from a moral standpoint, and others think that it can actually be the ethical choice. Responsibility, though, is all about owning your actions and obligations. If you're seeing a crime going on, you do have the option to turn a blind eye and just walk away from it happening right in front of you. And that's because you might feel responsible for looking out for yourself and your family. But in some places that might be seen as unethical or even considered un immoral, like why we have good Samaritan laws. It's pretty clear that ethics and morality are always changing and adapting in our society. Human rights, for example, are also on that same journey in evolution. Who knows, we might see something like the right to digital access officially recognized. It's important that these rights and rules grow up and change along with the progress in the tech and AI world. When it comes to AI, I really believe that making it easier to develop and bringing more folks into the mix is key for keeping things in check. The market's already working, it's magic with supply and demand, and the antitrust laws are stepping in to make sure that things stay more transparent and competitive. Companies are chasing profits and they're definitely all about their bottom line, but that competition is what's gonna drive AI to be used for good instead of being a menace. Honestly, the bigger worry is probably with nonprofits and government organizations that don't have this incentive structure set up. I think it would be better for us to team up and figure out how those groups should be using AI in a smart and responsible way. Being responsible is about owning up to our actions and doing what we're supposed to do. When it comes to AI, instead of freaking out and banning it because we're worried about it being misused, we should put the focus on putting safeguards in place. Responsible AI is just about smart product development. We've already got laws in place to handle this kind of stuff. Being responsible means making sure AI works like it's supposed to and that we've got measures to minimize any potential misuse like built-in safety features. I'm okay with AI helping hiring as long as there are checks to prevent any abuse or any violations of the law that would be illegal if a human carried them out. AI might mess up a bit, but when it comes to finding the right fit for a job, those mistakes are usually fewer than what we'd see with humans making the call. And that just means it's a win for everyone. If an AI system can't do better than the current hiring methods, it shouldn't even hit the market in the first place. Honestly, I, I don't need extra labels or classifications to keep me safe from that. It's just more red tape. AI is all about making distinctions, and when we say distinguish, we mean it's figuring out differences between different things or different groups. The goal for AI is to do this as accurately as possible using the info that it has from the data that it analyzes. The real issue comes in when it's making mistakes, like when bias creeps in, meaning that the distinctions it's making don't hold up to scrutiny because the information simply isn't solid enough or the algorithms are looking for noise rather than signal. So testing for bias isn't just a nice to have, it's a key part of making sure that AI is doing its job right and functioning the way it needs to be. Let's imagine this idea of shadow AI. It's not too far off, so think of a super personalized AI that's always by your side, like your buddy and your helper. And it's watching you on your phone, it's reading your emails, and you can just order it to perform tasks and assist you. Pretty soon I can picture a bunch of these shadow AIs teaming up and working together for us, cranking up our productivity like never before. With the way our population growth is slowing down and having these shadow AIs really makes sense. But 
here's the deal. Our shadow AIs need to be able to pick up on our feelings, whether we're grinding at work or just chilling out as part of being responsible. So how's that gonna mesh with the EU AI Act? I really don't think that the EU AI Act is gonna be the global standard they're hoping it will be. Honestly, I feel like it's just gonna slow down all the cool AI research and development and implementation over there, putting the brakes on AI adoption in the region and hurting it in the long run and the EU has already been massively damaged economically by endless bureaucracy and red tape. We've got this responsibility to keep pushing the boundaries of the AI because creating it is just part of who we are. And no matter how we spin it, our species faces a lot of challenges right now, whether it's the heating of the globe or sun going kaboom, I don't know. <laughs> Carbon-based creatures just aren't cut out for space travel. So if we can dodge our fate. With declining population numbers, we have less PhDs, we're gonna have less intelligent people, we have less people overall. And the only thing that's gonna help us solve these problems is artificial intelligence.